Hi everybody, this is Scott Grammer and I am the Old Audio Guy. And today I'm going to show you how to screw up a how-to YouTube video. Now, a few days ago I had a client who had brought me a very nice reel-to-reel -reel and it needed some repair work. And one of the things that it needed was it needed the heads relapped. Now, when I say relapped, that means that the heads need to be smoothed out so that the wear groove that has been formed by the passage of tape over it is gone and no longer interferes when you play or record a tape. And so I put on my little head cam, which I'll show you a picture of here, and uh, proceeded to do the relapping of his heads. The relapping went just fine. It was the video that didn't go just fine. Uh, I'll show you some of the video here. So as you can see, I didn't have the head cam aimed correctly, and you can barely see what I'm doing. I mean, you can kind of get the idea, but you can't exactly see it because it's, it's actually below the bottom of the frame. Um, I do have a way to monitor the video from this head cam, but I did not bother to set it up, and hence, uh, you don't get to see what I'm doing very well. So in a nutshell, there you are. That's my short how to screw up a how to YouTube video. So what we're doing today is we're going to lap some heads for a reel to reel. Uh, this machine in front of me is a Tascam Model 32. It's a half track semi-professional machine that runs at seven and a half and 15 inches per second. And it uses these heads. Now, a lot of Three head machines, most three head machines use different heads for record and play. They use heads that are optimized for record and heads that are optimized for play, but TX and Tascams do not. They use the same head for record and play. This is the head that was in the record position. And you can see the label says TX, two track, two channel record play, 537830018. And this is the playback head, TAC, two track, two channel, record play, 537830018. They're the same head. That is, well, it's unfortunate, but it's how it is. These heads, although they're not going to show on this camera, are slightly worn, not badly, but they're enough that, as you can see, my fingernail catches as I go up and down on them. So there is a noticeable wear groove. This would be a great time to relap these heads because they're not so worn as to be worn out, but they're worn enough that the performance of the machine would be improved by relapping the heads. So we do this first with a piece of flat glass. On top of the flat glass, we start with uh, some wet, wet dry uh, paper uh, sanding paper. It's not actually sand, but anyway. And uh, this one, let me see exactly what the grit is. This is the coarsest one, the one I start out with. It is uh, 600 grit, or 30 micron. Uh, this says green, but this is gray. It's the same thing, because this is from another manufacturer. <clears throat> so, what we do is we wet this a little bit. You don't want to use this dry. Wetting it makes it a little easier to put even pressure and even strokes on the head as you work on it. And it reduces scratches, which there are going to be some scratches, <clears throat> but we'll get rid of those with later uh, sandings with finer grit paper. So we'll start with the record head. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold the head like this and go like this on the grinding paper, on the sanding paper rather. And what we're doing is we're taking the unworn area at the top and bottom and bringing it down to the level of the worn area so that there is no longer this edge that can catch the edge of the tape like it catches my fingernail. So let's, let's get this party started. And no, the water will not hurt the head. The head is completely sealed. Unless you soaked it in water for a week or so, you're not going to hurt it. 
and of course we're not going to let it stay wet long enough to oxidize it. I'm only putting perhaps a pound of pressure on the head and as I move it back and forth let me show you a little bit from the side. I rotate it like that, rock it back and forth in order to not create any flat areas. The face of the head is hyperbolic and we want to keep it that way. Heads with this face shape do not need pressure pads. Pressure pads are a compromise and they also exacerbate head wear because they press the tape very hard against the face of the head and that makes it wear faster. This first grinding, this first lapping is going to take us all the way down to the face of the head. It's going to remove the edges that we're concerned about and all the subsequent lappings will be to remove the scratches that this lapping puts on the face of the head. In other words we're going to polish the head when we get through it's going to be very very smooth and very shiny. It's going to look like glass when we get through with it. Now, speaking of glass there is a variety of tape head made by Akai called Glass Crystal Heads. You'll find these in machines whose model number includes the letters GX. Glass Crystal Heads, generally speaking, do not wear. Uh, they've been making Glass Crystal Heads for many decades, about 50 years or so, maybe a little more. And I've never seen a glass crystal head that had a wear groove. Even on old machines that are just worn out otherwise mechanically, the heads are still perfect. Since I have two heads to do, and since I don't want to be changing papers out any more than necessary, when I finish this head, I will do the other head off camera on this same paper and then I will show you going through the various grades of paper. So the second head is done and we're going to take this 600 grit paper away and we'll set it down here for the moment. This is 1800 grit three times finer than the original and I'm going to turn it and my glass 90 degrees because I want to use one side for one head and one side for the other. Let's wet it down a little bit. Spread the water around. There we are. And we'll start with the playhead as we did before. And so now we're not trying to take metal off so much as we're trying to polish the head. That is our job now. You won't be able to feel a real difference in the head so much as you'll be able to see it. As we progress through these finer and finer papers, we're going to go through some seriously fine grit paper. If you've ever done any woodworking, uh, you would probably consider 1800 grit sandpaper to be really fine. Uh, for head relapping, 1800 grit is still pretty coarse. Uh, we're going to go through probably, I think, 6000 grit. I believe that's where we're going to end up. So the purpose here, as I said, is to polish the head, make it smooth. The smoother the head is, the less oxide it will scrape off the tape as the tape goes by. 
which means less wear on the tape and it means that the heads won't have to be cleaned as often all of which are pluses in pretty much anybody's book that's already starting to get a nice shine on it but I can still see scratches they're very fine but I can still see them but look at the shine on that puppy you see that I don't know if it's showing up on camera because I can't see what the camera sees I'm wearing a head cam and I have no monitor for it so let's do the other head this a little bit Oh yeah, we're definitely getting there. Definitely. A few minutes ago, I noted that that paper that I was using, the blue paper, was 1800 grit. And I said something about going through 6000 grit, and that was an error on my part. We're going to go a lot higher than 6000. I don't know why I said 6000. Uh, this, for instance, the next step up, is 8,000 and we're actually going to end on 22,000 that is some fine sanding material so let's get started on the 8,000 all right let's take a look at that puppy Yeah, the scratches are actually to the point that I can't see them anymore. And as you can see, it's got quite a shine on it. Let's do the other head. And that's just 8,000 grit. We're going to go to about two and a half times that, around 22,000 grit. So, and for those who might not know, what that means is uh, 22,000 pieces of abrasive material per inch that's uh, it's pretty fine material a whole lot finer than what you might use on wood and probably finer than what you would use on metal unless like this you're trying to achieve a high polish all right this is the 10,600 grit a little bit finer than the one we were using before I've already put the water on it, so we're going to do a little more polishing. I find it doesn't benefit you to go a real long time on the two highest grades because they really don't remove a lot of metal. And you could spend an hour on them and it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, I'll spend two or three minutes on each head doing this usually and that's enough to achieve the desired end which is a smooth polished head the water also serves another purpose it sticks the paper to the glass see I can actually well, I do have to hold it down a little bit, but <laughs> it doesn't move much when I do this. Now we're down to the very finest paper. This is the 22,000 grit paper. Uh, if you rub your hands over this while it's dry, it feels almost like notebook paper. It just it doesn't feel like sandpaper. It's, it's not as smooth as typing paper, but... Uh, notebook paper like you, like you used to use in high school it feels like that so let's put this head to it that's what I'm looking for right there let's uh, do the other head and we'll dry them off thoroughly in fact I'm going to just gonna use the same piece of paper because it's so fine, I don't think it really wears a whole lot. We 
you're done. So that's lapping uh, tape recorder heads. It is something that can be done at home if you know how to take the heads out and put them back in and align them. That's the hard part. You do have to do alignment after you put the heads back in, uh, but the actual lapping of the heads can be done at home. Hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Help me grow my channel. Have a nice day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.